day two of the DNC. Now, we here at Hard Lens Media could do a live stream watching the DNC convention, hearing all these quote unquote intellectuals speak, speak with their speeches and their electric teleprompters and everything else. However, why do that when we could just highlight the points where they embarrass themselves in front of the free world? That's right, folks. This is day two of the most embarrassing moments at the DNC. So, folks, I hope you're ready. I hope you're sitting down. Grab some popcorn as we make fun of people who are trying to be serious. But in all reality, they're Democrats. And while we do love them, we know one thing about them. They are not serious people. And the fact that there is this attempt to reform the Democratic Party or be associated with the Democratic Party, that's an L we have to carry. But let that be a lesson. We don't need these clowns near us. And speaking of clowns, give it up for the biggest cuck of them all. Bernie, the nutless wonder. At the very top of that to-do list is the need to get big money out of our political process. What are you doing speaking, Bear Bernie? Don't you know that's the DNC? They don't care about getting money out of politics. Boy, oh boy. You know what he is? He's the guy sitting in the corner as his uh, special lady friend is being banged by a stranger guy. Who, who is that? Who is that guy? He's just watching. Billionaires in both parties should not be able to buy elections, including primary elections. At the very Gee, you should have said that. In 2016 and 2020, but hold on. Here's here's one more iteration of that video. One more, one more, one more for you beautiful people. Just for you to laugh. Because in Illinois, you guys know that we have a billionaire for a governor. In fact, the 2018 mid, uh, midterm election cycle for the governor's race here for my state was at the time the most expensive governor's race for that year. The top 1% have never, ever had it so good. Why? We need an economy that works for all of us, not just the billionaire class. Thinks that we should trust him on the economy because he claims to be very rich. But take it from an actual billionaire. Governor J.B. Pritzker is from a dynastic family. He's our governor. This is him. He's a billionaire from a billionaire family. Okay. Folks, this is what happens when you have a corrupt system that pretends to be a constitutional republic with democratic values, but in all reality is an oligarchy. Now, the thing is about Pritzker, you know, like how Trump puts his name everywhere. The Pritzkers have put their name everywhere all over Chicago. So, yeah, they got a lot in common. But tell us about being an actual billionaire. Tell us again, Mr. Pritzker. Get from an actual billionaire. The top one. So there you go. <laughs> and of course, Fred Edward, it feels like 2016 all over again. A middle finger a thousand times to Bernie Sanders, as it should be, as it should be. But hold on there, folks. Hold on there, my lovelies. We're not done yet. We're not done yet smacking around the DNC. Michelle, she's going to talk about cheating because after all, Trump. Trump apparently to the Democrats is a sore loser, even though we've seen not once, not twice, but tic-tac-toe three in a row. A Bonnie got shot by a G.I. Joe. The Democrats rig primaries. Oh, they do it all the time here in Chicago. We call that a Tuesday. If things don't go our way, we don't have the luxury of whining or cheating others to get further ahead. No. We don't get to change the rules, so we always win. If we see a mountain in front of us, we don't expect there to be an escalator waiting to take us to the top. No. <laughs> but hey, you want to see irony? You want to see irony? Who wants to see irony? I do. I want to see it because I want to laugh at these jagoffs. While Michelle Obama is speaking, they actually 
come up with a chant. No, it's not I love you, Joe or Kamala. The DNC crowd chants do something totally oblivious to the fact that their party, that's right, Biden and Kamala have been in charge for three and a half years. I know. Well, wait, wait, kid. What do you mean they're saying do something? Here, check it out. Here. We're here to laugh at these people because they're not serious. You all. That's all I heard. That's all I heard from the people down there. That's all that you'll ever hear. But hold on. Hold on, folks. Wait a minute. If 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 you think we're done here, if if you think we're done here, folks, I, I need I need all of you to understand one thing and one thing alone. There's something important you need to know. Let's play this video right here. Just just more laughs and jokes at the DNC. And yet these people are going to be asking you for your vote. I swear to God, if you get some Democrat knocking at your door or getting a text message or email or phone call, you have my permission. Better yet, no. I demand that all of you laugh at their face. No, no, no. Go ahead and do it. This is the one time a channel's going to tell you. This is one time Heartlands Media is telling you to do something. Laugh at them. Laugh at them because of this. And you know what else? Kamala Harris, she likes dogs. That's why you got to vote for Kamala. You pedestrians. You, you plebeians. You peasants. You pheasants. Kamala loves dogs. So vote for Kamala. Stop complaining. Vote blue. And vote for dogs. Bark, bark. And you know what else? Kamala Harris, she likes dogs. And my dog, Chacha, likes her. Ah, isn't that sweet? We're starving out here. Kamala loves dogs. We're homeless out here. Did you know Kamala loves dogs? Help, help, help. Our infrastructure is falling apart. But did you know she loves dogs? <laughs> World War III is happening. But Kamala loves dogs. I'm a nuclear explosion. And I'm voting for Kamala because she loves dogs. Dogs are good judges of character. So are cats. We cannot elect. Ah, uh, no, 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 no. I don't know about cats, man. Listen, if cats were the size of lions, they'd kill you. Okay. I'm just, I'm just throwing it out there. So the next time you look at Mr. Whiskers, just remember he is plotting against you. But because you open up the canned food, he'll let you live. President, so are cats. We cannot elect a president who does not like dogs or hangs around with people who shoot them. <laughs> now hold on hey folks do you want to see what it's like to get gaslit do you want to see what it's like hey you know her you love her give it up for AOC AOC in Kamala Harris we have a chance to elect a president who is for the middle class because she is from the middle class uh huh she understands the urgency of rent checks and groceries and prescriptions. She is as committed to our reproductive and civil rights as she is to taking on corporate greed. Woo! And she is working tirelessly to secure a ceasefire in Gaza and bringing hostages home. Hey, I didn't get that memo. But hold on there, folks. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Stop everything. I'm just going to add a little bit of a spice to this flavored soup of ours. Because you know what? I got to give it up for Turncoat Don. Turncoat Don, tell the people, show the people what you got. Because I got to say, this is a work of art. And after all, Turncoat Don is a genius. Over the next 78 days... We will have to pour every ounce, every minute, every moment into making history on November 5th. But 
We cannot send Kamala and Tim to the White House alone. Together, we must also elect strong Democratic majorities in the House and in the Senate so that we can deliver on an ambitious agenda for the people. Because if you are a working parent trying to afford rent and childcare, Kamala is for you. If you are a senior who had to go back to work because your retirement didn't stretch far enough, Kamala is for you. Really? What was she doing the last three and a half years? I mean, it's, it, it, it's actually, you know what? It is rather disappointing that, again, look, while 4,000 people did show up for the march at Union Park on Monday, you know, on yesterday's live stream that I covered uh, for the Disrupted DNC was Kasama Sawant, Nick Cruz from RBN, and Dr. Jill Sign of the Green Party. Kasama Sawant said these words, you know, the low turnout of people is really concerning. Again, folks, Kamala Harris, when she ran way back in the early days of the 2020 primary, starting in tw late 2019, you know, she she didn't really have much to say. There was a big hype around her. Then her campaign went belly up, bankrupt. She got destroyed not once but twice by Tulsi Gabbard. And Marianne Williamson lasted longer than her during that 2020 primary. So what does that tell you? What, what does that tell you? What should that tell you? That people have forgotten and that people suffer from Trump derangement syndrome so badly, they're willing to forget. And I call it the blurring effect. By the way, that was a horrible pause for AOC. We got in your face like that. But okay, hey, I, I told you we're having fun. Grab the popcorn. If you're an immigrant family just starting your American story, Kamala is for you. America, when we knock on our neighbor's door, organize our communities, and elect Kamala Harris to the presidency on November 5th, we will send a loud message that the people of this nation will not go back. We choose a new path and open the door to a new day, one that is for the people and by the people. Thank you. Hold on. Kiki the fish, chant I am woman, but this biatch fits all women's stereotypes. We deserve better. Lipstick on a pig. Kiki, we're not going to argue with you because you hit the nail on the head. But wait a minute, folks. This is only 10 seconds. Please, please, everyone, calm down. Just calm down. You're lucky enough to be her friend. She calls you on her birthday, and sometimes she sings to you. That's Kamala. <laughs> She sings to you, happy birthday. She calls you on your birthday. Hey, Kamala, you know, are you going to call me on my birthday? Who wants a birthday song from Kamala Harris? That's right. I'm talking to you, my audience. Let's say today's the day of your birthday, or is it at your birthday's down the road? Do you want Kamala to call you and sing you happy birthday? Type one for yes, Kit. Because she's a president who cares. And a president who cares has my vote. You awful man. Type 2. I don't want her to sing me happy birthday. I want to tell her how she's going to fix the economy. Hmm? You know? Yeah, I got bills to pay. I got, I, got, I got to get food in my stomach. I don't want anyone to sing me happy birthday. I wonder how many twos will be in the chat. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. But hey, if you want to see epic trolling. If you want to see epic trolling. And it took me a while to notice it. But we all know who Matt Walsh is. Well, that crazy mad dog snuck inside the DNC convention. And right there, next to good old Kathleen Collins and Chucky Boy Schumer, we witnessed an epic troll. And I got to say, 10 out of 10, this was a life-changing video. The more they see her, the more they're going to like her. I saw what she did in the Senate. We served together for four years. She cared about families. She could work with all kinds of people. And she was effective in getting things done. One of the things she pushed, which we succeeded in. Oh, 
There he was, in case you missed it just a little bit. But hang on. Oh, and she was effective in getting things done. One of the things she pushed, which we said. Right there. Succeeded in was $35 insulin for a. Right there with the good old Trump T-shirt on. The fact that he didn't get his head caved in is pretty fascinating. Senior citizens, now we're going to get it for everybody. What's your response when Trump takes credit of that? Trump takes credit for so many things he doesn't do and gets the blame for a lot of things he does. <laughs> right there. Right there. Hold on. Let, let, let me take off the Hard Lens Media uh, brand for a second. Hold on there, folks. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let's just remove that there for a second. There he is. Right there. Right there in the corner, right behind Chucky Boy Schumer. Dude, he's, he, he's lost his bearings, as we can see, day by day. Now, that's what you call epic troll. That is that is a work of art. But hold on. Let's have ourselves a palate cleanser here for a second. Give it up for Nico House. The Democratic National Convention has arrived, so you know we have to cover some of this super serious, hard-hitting analysis. But first of all, all of you people who are complaining that Kamala Harris isn't going to be better than Joe Biden on Palestine, AOC wants you to know she is working round the clock for a ceasefire. But she is working tirelessly to secure a ceasefire in Gaza and bringing hostages home. And we honestly have no choice to believe her because what better way to assure a permanent ceasefire than to give Israel $24 billion in more military aid to make sure they can just completely wipe Palestinians off the face of the planet because that's definitely a surefire way to make sure that there is no more firing if they can't fire back, right? And of course, Joe Biden had to step in and remind everybody why the hell he had to step out to begin with. Because, you know, him and teleprompters don't really have a good relationship. So while he was reading the teleprompter, he reminded us that women are now without electrical. Quote, women are not without electrical, not, not allowed, not without electro, electoral or political power. No kidding. That might be a Democratic Party inside joke because they actually started cheering for him and we're just stuck here trying to figure out what the fuck is going on. But sh Hey, but women don't have electrical, can have electrical. So, so, so if you ever hear any kind of crying and no electricity, you know, just remember, just remember women, you, you have the electricity, you have the electric, you have the electric. Sure. There was no real discussion about genuine, tangible policies. There was no real discussion about the state of the United States economy and rather the economy of the rest of the world that is kind of suffering because of the United States. But everybody wanted to assure you that there was a lot of joy in the room. Thank you for bringing back the joy. He does it all with a sense of joy. You do not need to be afraid of the future. There is joy mm -hmm. in the future. There is joy in having your boss be a black woman. It's charisma. It's the joy. A positive campaign that focuses, as she said, on the future. That is about joy. Yesterday, what you saw is joy. Joy. The joy. Joy. And Julianne Reed in particular wanted to let you guys know there were people so joyful that they were dancing. They're just celebrating this transition into a joyous presidency and joy. I'm sitting in this room, in this space, that is such a joyful space tonight. Exuberance, uh, joy. I think <laughs> Democrats today, they feel a kind of joy and a kind of relief. There's a sense that it's it'll be a fight, but it'll be a joyous fight now. It won't be a slaw. People clapping joyfully and dancing and singing. Get up for Kurt Boss. We represent nothing. Just effing say it. Oh, yeah, true. And look, hey, vomiting emojis, method, arcane gene. For truth be told, there you go. And salty digital dive. Happy, joy, joy, happy, happy, joy, joy. Joyfully, yeah, that's basically the policy platform for Kamala and the Democrats. That's basically what I got from that. I don't know how the fuck y'all gonna use joy to pay y'all high ass electric bills and pay for this three dollars and seventy cent gas. Also, Jim Pisaki wanted to let you all know how diverse the room was. As he sat 
at a panel full of fucking white people. Just watching tonight, the diversity of the faces, the youth in the room, yeah. the diversity of... Oh, there was diversity, all right. Diversity and empty seats. That's right. Those empty seats filled with the ghost of Gaza. False, empty promises by the DNC. Homeless men, women, and children here in the USA. Those empty seats are filled with the fact that we have a corrupt neoliberal system and that there are families, even now as I speak, struggling under this corrupt system. Empty seats. There were empty seats. Such diversity. Filled seats and empty seats. And those empty seats are filled with all the broken promises from your friends and the Democratic Party in the United States Senate and House to the presidential candidate herself. People's backgrounds is so striking and different from a couple of weeks ago. I'm also not sure how that's going to help y'all pay your bills or what that's referenced to. Although it could be a reference to the diverse population of people who have been negatively impacted by all of Kamala's policies as a DA, an attorney general, and a vice president. That could be, I don't know what the fuck diversity means in this situation, but yay for mastermind hour you get up and get out of here with that foul language this is an effing family friendly show black people being able to buy tickets to a convention now there was one brave soul in the msnbc panel who had the audacity to suggest that eventually people are probably going to want to hear about her policies considering they're at the democratic national convention and she still doesn't have a single policy listed on her website yeah but they just looked at dude like he was crazy because why ruin a good campaign with actionable policy? So to summarize all of this, the Democrats spent about $200 million more or less on this convention to throw a big ass party for Kamala Harris. And judging by the way things are looking right now, you won't know any more about her nor her policies by the end of this convention as you did before this convention started. The U.S. is truly and royally fucked. Hey, can't argue, but hold on. Let's just double check because anything can happen between now until the end of the convention and still nothing. She's, she's, uh, well, well, she, uh, still has her store. Hey, let's see what's in the store. Let's go shopping real quick. Cause after all, it's a pretty big deal. Uh, okay. We still got the coach, uh, the hooded sweater. We got the pins. We got the signs. We got the retro. We got the mug. We got this. We got a oh, ooh, a Harris can cooler. There you go. All right, and a Tim Waltz signature T-shirt and a Kamala signature T-shirt. Thirty-two dollars. Best, best Thomas Jefferson, Andrew Jackson, and Alexander Hamilton uh, Trinity that you'll ever spend, plus tax. <laughs> But then finally, folks, because this because after all, everything has has an end. And this is day two of the epic fails at the DNC. And what better way? Hold on. Let's actually do this properly, properly. What better way than to bring this out of the fact that <clears throat> that the Democratic Convention is failing? It's from an alderman of the 15th Ward here in Chicago. Let's play it. Democrats winning any new voters at this convention. I highly doubt it. I think this is all playing to their own base, not trying to recruit new people, because clearly the Democratic Party, my party, is not interested in talking about what matters. How are you going to keep people safe? How are you going to secure the border? And how are you going to deal with the 8 million undocumented individuals that they let in under Kamala Harris's lead? Now, I will say this, the convention, in my opinion, it is working in favor for the Democrats because the Democrats um, are able to control their narrative. However, it is also a failure because progressives, independents, uncommitted, everybody that's out there, third party voters, the DNC has made it clear that they don't respect anyone that's protesting outside. They made it very clear that they are not paying attention to any outside voices. So it is a failure because they're assuming all of us are so stupid that we'll fall in line and support Kamala. I think this entire election will be 50-50. It all depends on who can bring out the highest amount of voters. But this is day two. Day two of nothing. Day two of a nothing burger. With the side of nothing cola and nothing fries. The Democrats are just giving platitudes. 
What they're, what they're doing is trying to give a placebo shot to the diehard liberals who are dying in their beds, hoping that, oh, no, the evil boogeyman, the orange Cheeto, Donald Trump, doesn't come back into office. This is not how you win elections, nor this is how a serious pol political party should act. But the only reason why the Democrats are acting the way they are acting is because the American people gave them that consent. Look at the clownish behavior. Look at how people are hyping up Kamala. Look at how they're building her up. All in all, she is just a fake, empty person with empty promises. She will not follow through because if there's going to be any real change, you got to break away from the Democrats, as you should.